Today we're going to be talking about books and uh, the reason I'm going to talk about these specific books is that they will be featured on MassDrop. Now if you don't know MassDrop, I'm not associated with MassDrop, but it's a site where people suggest products, if enough people vote their interest uh, in those products, those things are bought in bulk and typically what happens is that you get very good prices and given these two books I think it's very worth it and therefore I was very interested in, in um, featuring these books here. All right, These are two books by Andreas Lambrou. There is Fountain Pens, the United States of America and United Kingdom and there is Fountain Pens of Japan. Now you can see uh, these. this is a big book and the Fountain Pens, the other one of the United States of America and UK, I'm just going to say USA and UK, uh, is, is a bit smaller, but both of these are sizable books. Now, before I'm going to go into these books, um, I would like to point out a little bit about the, or talk a little bit about their history. Andreas Lambrou is a is a pen collector, and he he really is an expert on fountain pens. He has written numerous books. Many of those books sell out, and then become extremely popular among collectors. Um, I think his previous books, I, I own one of his books, uh, Fountain Pens Vintage and Modern, another famous book by his is Fountain Pens of the World, and this man has been collecting pens for years and years and really knows his stuff. So this is not just an author writing about fountain pens, this is a living expert. Now I have had the pleasure of interacting briefly with him in 2012, the DC Pen Super Show, when this book, Fountain Pens of Japan, was just released. and just to give you an idea, it took uh, Mr. Lambrou and his co-author Masamichi Tsunami 10 years to write this book and 12,000 man hours of research time went into this. So what you are getting is not necessarily light reading, although I think that for many pen lovers this will be very fascinating, but what you get is a very accurate, very detailed historical overview of pens produced in either the USA and UK or Japan. Now there is going to be a third book, as I understand it, that was supposed to be the second book, it's supposed to be a trilogy on European pens, but that is not yet launched at this time. Okay, what I want to do now is uh, switch the camera viewpoint so that you can look into the books with me, have a look at what they're about, and um, see if this is something you may be interested in picking up. Now, as I said, uh, that's the final thing I will say before uh, I, I go into the books. These are not really coffee table books. I think, I mean, a coffee table book, nice, large book, beautiful pictures, etc. Yes, they are that, but given how well researched and well written these books are, I think it's a whole different matter. This is not just a pretty picture book. This is a veritable encyclopedia of pens. Uh, and especially if you're a collector, for example, of Japanese pens, I know there's a lot of you out there, this book, you need it. It's that simple. And what's fascinating is that these books are fairly expensive. Last time I saw this book in the Netherlands, new, it was listed at 220 euros. And I'm just going to draw up the uh, Master Up site. I saw that if four people will back this, the two books together will cost $149.99 plus shipping. So that is not even half of what this book new costs in at least some countries. If more people back it, uh, that is 12, they'll only cost $120 plus shipping, which I'm going to show you why that is an amazing bargain. All right. Now, I say again, I'm not affiliated with MassDrop. I don't get anything out of this. So I'm not trying to uh, uh, commercialize in that regard, but given how great a deal this is, I think it's definitely worth considering. So, let's look at the books in detail. Okay, first let's have a look at this book, Fountain Pens of the United States of America and United Kingdom. Now what I have here is a, a Lamy Safari, which I just wanted to put on there, for you fountain pen lovers out there, so you can see the, the, the approximate size of the book. As a lover of books, I think this is a very attractive book, not just for the contents, but also the way it's made. What you're buying is a hardback, which actually has linen cover, uh, making it very, very attractive, I think. Also, what you'll be buying is a special limited edition, which is actually signed 
by Andreas Lambrou, which uh, may appeal to you. Okay, now, much more interesting than um, uh, showing off the external parts of the book is, of course, what's in the book. I like the organization of the book. It's split up in the USA and UK parts, and what it does is it gives you a brief history uh, of pens in that those parts of the world, and then it will go through manufacturers. And those manufacturers, uh, as far as I could tell, do not really seem to be listed alphabetically or anything, but are listed chronologically, so you get a nice overview of, of the development of the pen. The book is full of beautiful full-color photographs. I, I was very impressed by that. I have uh, an other book by Andreas Lambrou, as I said, Fountain Pens Vintage and Modern, and that mainly has black and white photographs, which are nice and clear, but they are black and white. In this book, the colors just splash off the pages, which is really, really cool. I'll show you that in a bit more detail. Something else I wanted to point out is that you uh, get these very nice line drawings. This is actually not a photograph, but a line drawing, and these were sp uh, specially uh, commissioned for the book to show off some really cool pens. For example, what you have here is um, a, an actual fountain pen of 1895. So clearly a very vintage pen, but uh, if you, I try to zoom in here, if you look at the detail of the line drawing, uh, you can really see how much uh, effort must have gone into making these, which I think is, is very, very cool. Uh, and as you can see, you can get, you get a whole bunch of these, and I'm, I'm very uh, impressed by the the uh, skill with which those drawings were made, because some of them actually made me uh, study them and, and see if they were photographs, but there actually are line drawings in there, which is very cool. Alright, another nice thing is that a lot of these pens have been photographed in such a way as to be life-size, so you get a very good impression of the actual uh, size of the, the fountain pens uh, as you, you read about them. Um, now, I, I, I couldn't really figure out if that goes for every pen in this book, but I know that a, a number of them are life-size, which kind of makes sense, right? Alright, so, of course, you, you get an overview of the, uh, the well-known brands, right, like, like Waterman, but there is stuff in here, like Triad, I had never even heard of. Now, I wouldn't really consider myself to be a vintage expert, um, or for that matter, an expert at anything, but in any case, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely not a hardcore vintage collector, uh, so um, probably not the best judge of that, but in any case, it's a cool overview, as I said, very well researched, and as I also said before, the colors splash off the pages. I mean, beautiful photographs, crisp, and just magnificently colored. I also like the uh, there is some old ads, so advertisements for fountain pens in here, uh, which is always a, a great resource for research. And you find them in more books, but it's it's very neat that you uh, that they have included some of those too. Um, a lot of these pens I had never even heard of, but some of the finishes are stunning. And as I said, the way they are reproduced in photographs is is very very impressive. Uh, so, that alone, the eye candy, I would say, make it, would make it worthwhile to, to get these books if you are serious about fountain pens. Um, so, that's, I would say, the part of the, the USA, um, and you really get some of these extremely intricate, nice pens that, as I said, I, I'd never heard of, but it's, it's wonderful to see them. Uh, so that's that's very very cool. Okay, so that was the US part. Now if we move on to the UK part, the setup is, is very similar. So you get a brief history. Um, I would also like to point out that this is really excellent paper. It's, it's very nice to the touch, nice and glossy without being so glossy that it picks up light and blinds you. So again, the, the, the pictures are, are very clear. So again, a, a brief history of pens in the UK, and then you go on to the, the specific uh, manufacturers. And I hope that what, what this makes clear is that the, the, the book is definitely uh, picture-heavy, but 
has a lot of text too and scholarly text so that you can really learn about the manufacturers of these pens and know what to look out for and know a little bit about their history uh, and I, I think that's it's, it's pretty much a textbook on fountain pens that you could use in a university course on fountain pens if there was such a thing so I think that's that's very very nice now having looked at this book um, why don't we go over to the Fountain Pens of Japan book. All right. Okay, I had to switch camera positions a little bit because this is such a large book. Um, it definitely is is big and it's 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 huge. It's it's really a lot of pages. Okay, so Fountain Pens of Japan, another very pretty book, also uh, linen covered and uh, also signed. So that's what you would be buying. And you can already tell, I mean, from literally from page one, again, wonderful reproductions, great colors, I, I absolutely love it. Okay, so, as a bit of an ad there for Andreas Lambrou's uh, uh, own uh, pen company, but if we move on, the book, alright, so you get introduction, uh, Japanese pens, the lacquer and the art of Maki A, of course Maki A, the, the Japanese lacquer is very popular on fountain pens. And then you get the, the, the bulk of the book is about minor manufacturers and then major manufacturers. Now, I am definitely not a Japanese pen collector. Most of these minor manufacturers meant nothing to me. For example, Ban A or Kato Seika, Seiza Kusho Company. It, 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 I've never even heard of these guys. And then there's the major manufacturers. Uh, of course, Pilot Namiki, Platinum, Nikaya, and Sailor. And I think most fountain pen collectors will, will be familiar with those names. And then you even get customized pens, such as uh, Danny, uh, the Danny Trio uh, pens, uh, and even some customized Parkers. Um, of course, a little bit of uh, um, background on the authors, some of the other books uh, that... Um, uh, uh, Andreas Lambrou wrote, like this, the one I mentioned before, that's another book of him uh, that I own. And well, let's just uh, go with the books, huh? I mean, or with the, with the, I mean, this picture was one of the first things I saw when I leafed through this book and I, I, I fell in love with. I mean, these are nibs, right? Nib, nib stock. Um, it's, it's very artistic. And I, I love seeing that. Now, of course, you have all these these fascinating things like like brush pens, which which go hand in hand with, with Japanese fountain pens, I would say. Uh, so you you there is the, the a good introduction. Again, many many beautiful pictures that that it's it's just fantastic. I mean, something like this. Uh, this says Pilot Gold Nib Samples made between 1921 and 1927. And you can see all these these very fascinating nibs. I even thought I thought there was a yeah, there's a music nib right there with three tines. I don't know how well uh, you can see that exactly, but um, trying to zoom in a little bit there. So you have that that, that music nib uh, there. It's very interesting to see these types of, of historical things. Um, this says Namiki 7th grade nib selection 1950s and it says handwriting is a symbol of personality. So you have all these different nib types and how you would, uh, what they would write like. Um, so a lot of these types of, of beautiful full page uh, spreads. Um, so very very fascinating and again brands I'd, I'd never even heard of. Um, so that's very very neat. Uh, of course, a, a chapter on Maki A. Very interesting because I, I did not know a lot about the technique itself apart from knowing that it is used on fountain pens. And this is a very, very well written chapter on the, the, the different stages which you can see here in, in the lacquer process, etc. So that's it was very informative. Uh, Radin, I'm, I'm, someone pointed out that it's actually Radin, so I, I will say that. Uh, there's these beautiful inlaid pens that are very popular among collectors. Um, it, it's, it's all covered here, so it's great. One thing I really appreciate about this book too, and I know that's, uh, that's nitpicking, but it lies flat. So the, the page does not uh, scroll back which is very pleasant in, in reading. And of course, if you do want to use it as a coffee table book, just to have it lie open 
you know, and some really cool pictures like these uh, desk pens with paper knives built into them, um, you can do that. The book will not accidentally uh, uh, shut on you, which I think is very cool. Okay, well let's let's move on a little bit. So then we go from the the uh, Matier and Lacquer chapter to the the minor manufacturers. Um, again, very well researched text. I have the feeling that this this book does not necessarily present pens life size because I mean I like oversized pens, but that seems a little um, a bit too large to me. Although the nib size actually doesn't look too weird, so maybe this is life size. In any case, as with the other book, stunning photography, uh, very very clear. You can see every detail on the pen. Uh, I I think it's it's. Uh, I understand why this took 12,000 hours to uh, to compile. Definitely a labor of love. All right, so many many minor manufacturers, um, which again makes this book fantastic for collectors of Japanese pens. Uh, you you are bound to learn something, and if you are already an expert, this book is bound to improve your expertise so that you really know what to look for, what to get. Uh, what what special and, and odd stuff to look out for uh, so I I think this this really I mean, it's so gorgeous every page you flip you see something you've never seen before which which is really amazing okay then I just want to skip to the major manufacturers here we have pilot for example of course uh, very famous uh, manufacturer of pants the, the vanishing point of the um, that's the, the old faceted model. Very, very cool. Um, yeah, the Mew, very popular, right, with the nib that's part of the barrel. Uh, that's, it's a, a popular collector's item. So, you really have an amazing overview of, of all these pens, and again, advertisements. I, I think it's, 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 it's extremely fascinating. Now, again, moving forward a bit, you go to the, uh, the customized pens. Um, here we have the, the, the classic pens, which is Andreas Lambrou's uh, own pen company. Um, this is uh, the dear fellow, by the way, Andreas. Um, it actually says, and Lambrou and Brown discuss the progress of their CP series. This is not SBRE Brown, it's another Brown, just for the record. Um, so we have the classic pens. Well, of course, he covers that. They, I think they are uh, collaborations with um, Sailor. Uh, the King of Pen, for example, is is, is customized a lot, um, which is very cool. Um, I was actually looking for uh, that's a lot of classic pens. Well, I mean, you can't really blame the man if you if you write a book about this. You also write about your own pen company because they I, I don't I've never used any of their pen, their pens, but they look absolutely stunning. So I can see how that will work. Here, have Parker. Um, so customized Parker pens, um, yeah, I'm sorry, but in a word, stunning. I also need that case, by the way. I just realized I need a case like this to display my pens. So this is what I'm saying. You just, you, you, you see something new every time you go through the book. Um, I, I have to admit that in the time I had, I was unable to read the books cover to cover. Um, so that's a disclaimer there, but I have read parts of it and everything just worked. You know, everything came together, well researched. It's clear that these guys know what they're talking about. So, I'll, uh, uh, if you're interested, of course you can buy the books wherever you like, if you can still find them, um, but Mastrop will have this deal and I think uh, it's going to be a shame to pass up on this opportunity to get both of these books for what I think is a really great price. So, check it out, Mastrop.com uh, thanks a lot for sending me these books to review. I think my viewers will really appreciate it. If you are not aware of these these books, uh, you should definitely check them out if you're if you're serious about fountain pens. And uh, that's all there's to it, guys. I hope this was useful, and I gladly see you later. Bye bye.